Hola familia, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about how to apply yourself with HAPE. First, I'd like to say that if you have the opportunity to receive HAPE from someone who carries this medicine, either a traditional medicine carrier from an indigenous tribe or someone that you trust that has been working with this medicine for a long time and has been initiated in their own right, it's really better for your first application to receive the hape without having to think about the logistics of applying yourself and really just connect with the medicine um, by receiving it being applied by someone else. And so if that's possible, um, it's recommended. If not, it's okay. In this video, I'm going to explain how to apply yourself. Um, but if you have the opportunity to go to a hape ceremony or receive uh, further instruction, I highly recommend it because this is a very, very complex an in-depth medicine and practice, and it does require a, a lot of initiation, education, and training. First, I'll share that um, there are two types of applicators. There is a tepi, which is for um, applying someone else, and so it has an end for um, blowing the air, and it has an end that goes into the nostril, and, and the medicine is blown up. This is also the side where the medicine is loaded typically, although there are some tepis where you load from the other side. And then we also have the curipe. The curipe is a personal applicator. So with the curipe, this is designed for someone to apply themselves. And in this case, the short side will go in the mouth and the long side will go in the nostril. And so these are the two types of applicators and I'll share uh, in a little while about how to apply someone else, but I'll start with applying yourself because applying yourself is, you know, a very beautiful thing and allows for you to commune with the medicine and not need to ask for anyone else to apply you, not need to find someone who can apply you, and is probably the most accessible way for you to commune with this medicine. When you're applying yourself, it's important to understand that your energy is going in words to yourself to align and organize. And so sometimes if we're feeling very um, disorganized, it can be hard to organize ourselves enough to apply ourselves with hape. If this is the case, if you're feeling um, a little scattered or you're feeling um, a lack of clarity, it's very highly recommended to spend some time in meditation, some time with breath work to center yourself and really organize yourself to the point where you feel like you can serve yourself with hape. Because once again, that same energy that you're directing into the applicator is going deep within and that's the energy with which the hape is going to be delivered to you. And so that's why for traditional peoples, applying someone else is something that requires many, many years of initiation and training with um, this medicine and um, proper studies and is not something that we just start doing just because we found hape and we love it and we want to share it with other people. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But essentially for now, just with the basics of application, it's very simple essentially with like the logistical elements, but you will need to essentially load the hape, um, first uh, placing it in the palm of your hand, setting your intention and your prayers. And then when you are ready to load the hape, uh, flattening it out with the long side to um, make sure that it's even across the, the amount of hape. And then you'll take that same long side and you'll scoop up the half amount of the hape. And you'll scoop it up and we always recommend that that energy faces you, that you scoop towards yourself. This is really in line with locking in the energy and making sure that there's like that clarity of intention and prayer and centeredness as you go through this ritual. After you load up half of the hape, you can tap it and then the hape will come down to the V crux of the applicator. Um, and this is good for just even distribution. And then um, when you're ready to apply yourself, you'll inhale put the long side of the applicator into the first nostril and blow into the short side. And so with that blow, it's important that that blow be clear, strong, centered, and forceful to make sure that all the hot bay comes out. Now, forceful from a place of love, right? From a place of loving clarity, from a place of intentionality 
and uh, centeredness, not forceful in the sense of like you're going to punch yourself in the nose, right? So really kind of getting clear with that um, energy that you're infusing into the application because again, that's going to set the tone for the experience that you have. After you apply the first nostril, it's important to immediately apply the second nostril. It can be uh, tempting, especially if the medicine is hitting you strong and you're feeling that reaction come on to wait, but it's really recommended that you serve both nostrils consecutively without waiting too much time at all in between both nostrils to allow for that even application. And then you can go into your prayer meditation, your experience with the medicine, um, but to really just serve yourself. And when you're serving yourself, you have that attentiveness, presence, complete it, and then go into the full embodiment of the experience. Of course, it's there's some logistics around this, right? And so learning how to apply takes some time. Maybe the first time you self-apply, it's a little awkward or you don't blow hard enough or um, hape gets stuck in the karipe. This is all normal, right? This is part of like the, the process. And so over time, as you experience what it's like to apply yourself, as you kind of find your your roots within this medicine and you form a relationship with this medicine, serving yourself becomes very natural. Um, but again, if it's something that is feeling challenging or uncomfortable, it's highly recommended to um, receive the medicine from someone else and then you can experience all the benefits without having to worry about that, all of those little elements involved with self-applying. And then there might be a time that comes where you feel ready to apply yourself and and that clear you know knowing okay I feel prepared and ready to do this I would like to start a practice of self application and then from there you know things will just flow because there's that you know readiness if you're feeling hesitation or um, unsurety that can make establishing your practice a little uncomfortable or, or unclear what I hear from a lot of people is um, that, you know, if it's your first experience having hape, sitting down, creating this container for yourself, learning how to apply, it can feel like a lot. And that makes a lot of sense, right? It's, there's a lot of factors here. First of all, we're blowing something up our nose. So um, culturally speaking, that's something that is not um, completely natural for us or um, something that we even um, have in part of, in our society in like an accepted form, right? And there, even in that, we're really shifting our perspective and shifting our conditioning and our patterns. But ultimately, if that's the case, you know, really just allowing this process to be a natural evolution and, and really trusting if like if there's if it's not flowing to establish a personal practice of self-application, maybe you're not meant to be working with Hape in that way for now, you know, and maybe you um, hear about a ceremony and there's a, a, a traditional medicine person coming through your, your local area and you get the opportunity to go and receive from them and they serve you and you learn more about the Hape and it like is this perfect natural evolution. So we really just encourage this trusting of the process and trusting your intuition as well as allowing for it to unfold naturally. And then when it comes to serving others, like I mentioned, this is something that is much more delicate because they're just like with smudging, just like with any of these tools, when we go into the position of serving someone else, it requires a lot more um, grounded in um, embodiment of the practice. And so we really encourage people to focus on establishing your own personal relationship with Hape before you go serving other people. And sometimes this can take a couple years for traditional cultures, they would say longer. And so ultimately it really is this journey of really deepening your relationship with the plant and you know, not just serving the Hape to someone else um, because um, you have a tepi or because you have um, this desire to share hape with someone, but really um, taking time to really get to that place of understanding the energetics of the hape and how it works, being able to explain it to someone else too, because if you're explaining and sharing hape to someone for the first time, you're their first interaction with this medicine, right? And so how you explain it, how you present it, how you hold the medicine is going to um, influence their entire um, beliefs around this tool and really um, play a really big role in how they um, experience this medicine. 
And so there's a lot of different factors that come into play with not just sharing, but also um, being that uh, someone's first introduction to the medicine. And so from that place, you know, if you want to share about hape with someone, with a loved one or someone that you think could benefit from this practice, we really recommend talking from personal experience and what the hape has done for you. And, um, and from that place, you know, if that person is interested, um, helping them to source their own hape or experience and find an experience where they can receive hape from someone, especially if you don't feel in complete totality within your being a readiness to be that introduction for someone else. When we go to serve hape to someone else, it's very similar as far as like the logistics go um, and understanding dosage is also important if we're applying both ourselves and someone else, right? So um, like I mentioned at the beginning, the dosage for it, the context of a traditional indigenous ceremony with hape is much, much more than the context that many um, of you are working with hape. And I believe that to be beautiful. And so everyone has their own sensitivities to the hape. Remember, it's tobacco. So some people, especially if they have no relationship with tobacco, a tiny amount of hape is going to be incredibly potent and strong for them. Others, if they've worked with um, hot tobacco before, or perhaps they've been a lifelong smoker, right? So they have a nicotine um, build up in their system already. Serving them um, a larger amount of hape uh, would make a little bit more sense as well as just for personal um, knowing, you know, as far as like knowing how much to serve yourself, um, your relationship with tobacco as well as other substances and just really um, knowing your sensitivity level can help guide you as far as how much to serve yourself. We always recommend starting with about a dime sized amount. And then from there, you can increase um, over time once you start to get to know the medicine. It's also important to keep in mind that each blend is so much different and has different levels of potency. It um, will really just work on the physical body, the emotional body, and the spiritual body in unique ways, right? And so, especially if you're trying a new hape and you're acquainting yourself, acquainting yourself, getting acquainted with a new blend, um, starting with a small amount until you really get to know the frequency of that medicine um, is really helpful too, to really just navigate the experience. So essentially, this is kind of like the overview for how to apply yourself with hape. Um, it's recommended once you apply yourself to hold the medicine inside the nose and not release it um, for as long as possible. Um, for some people that's 30 seconds and then you need to blow your nose. For other people it's longer, but we want to hold the medicine in as long as you can and then blow your nose when it feels right. Um, it's also important when you uh, receive the medicine or whether you're being applied um, or whether you're serving yourself that you close the back of your throat so that the medicine doesn't drip down into the throat passage because that is uncomfortable. It, it can also cause vomiting, but not from the energetic, simply from the fact that you just put tobacco into your um, throat passage. So you wanna keep it in the nasal cavity. And then if you're receiving hape and someone else is serving you, you wanna make sure that you're not inhaling or exhaling when they apply, right? That's super important. Um, and just hold the breath, sustain the breath. You can either exhale and sustain the breath at the bottom or inhale and sustain the breath at the top while the medicine is applied to you. Of course, when you're applying yourself, you're gonna inhale and then blow right? So it's a little bit, you don't have to worry about that element so much when you're self-applying, but when you're applying someone else or when you're receiving it, making sure that you do not inhale or exhale while you're receiving the medicine. So there's just some elements of logistics just to keep in mind with working with it. And ultimately, you know, a lot of questions come up for people when they're starting their practice. And I think we're addressing here so most of the most uh, common ones um, and then in the next video we'll talk a little bit more about some of the um, questions surrounding practice and sustaining this practice and um, working with the medicine uh, over the long period of time and what that can look like 
Um, but please let us know in the comments if you have additional questions or if other things have come up for you within um, the context of your Hapi practice. And we would love to elaborate and make sure that everyone feels resourced to begin this practice because it is quite beautiful um, experience and a really wonderful complement to our spiritual studies. And so ultimately what we're doing here at Four Visions is really providing the tools and the resources to support you in embarking on this journey of self-inquiry and exploration through the plant medicines and through the spirits of nature. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.